What's up guys, it's your boy, Barca boy 103 Today we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. Not that much news, but after that Champions League draw, the club needs to make movements in the market. Firstly, signing some bloody full backs. We need both a right back and a left back. No news on the left back, but on the right back, there is some big news about Juan Foyth and Thomas Mounier, which I will cover. But of course, the players coming in, players will have to leave the club this summer. We have an update on Umtiti, Braithwaite, and also most importantly, on Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. His move to Chelsea is getting increasingly and increasingly likely. Barcelona, Chelsea, and Aubameyang are all confident that this deal will happen in the next 24 to 48 hours. But the question is right now, if it's not completed by Sunday, will Barcelona continue with this pursuit in selling Aubameyang? But there are two players who Barcelona want to sell during this window that could end up staying at the club. Firstly being Memphis Depay. Of course, his move to Juventus has now collapsed and no other club is showing any real interest in Memphis Depay. And now the club are considering to keep him alongside his Dutch teammate, Frankie de Jong. Again, Frankie wants to stay at the club. His agent, Ali Dursen, is in Barcelona and hopefully a meeting will be taking place to get a solid concrete answer on his future. We do also have an update on UEFA possibly sanctioning Barcelona as well. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get the 300 likes in this video. Be very much appreciated. Also, if you're new, make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already. And let's get into it. Let's start off with the transfer news over the past 24 hours. The first players that we have been linked with are right backs. As we all know, there's about under a week left in the transfer window and the club must sign a right back with the number one priority of course being Juan Foyt. Now Gerard De Miro came out saying that if Aubameyang ends up leaving Barcelona in the next 24 to 48 hours, Juan Foyt will be a Barcelona player. I can guarantee it. So that's quite clear to me that we do need a little bit more money to get Juan Foyt and of course we need the margin for FFP as well. Like I said before, I said again, Aubameyang's exit makes everything so much easier for Barcelona, registration. Uh, of course, you know, about 20 million euros coming in as well into the transfer budget. So, again, the club need a right back. Juan Foyt is the number one target. It will be difficult, but again, the signing is possible. But of course, Barcelona do have alternative options. The right now, the alternative to Juan Foyt most likely is Thomas Mounier. Now we are hearing from the German media coming here from Bild. They came out saying that Thomas Mounier and the Borussia Dortmund coach don't have a harmonious relationship and this could bring a Belgium closer to joining Barcelona this summer. So apparently Borussia Dortmund coach and Thomas Mounier do not get along too well. Apparently there's always some bad blood in there. The coach and them have problems off the pitch, not more so on the pitch. And again, that could force uh, Bar Bayern Munich to sell Thomas Mounier this summer. But this point that director of uh, Borussia Dortmund came out over the past 24 hours saying that we have absolutely no intention of selling Thomas Mounier. Currently, it is absolutely not in our plan to sell him before the transfer window ends. Now, when I saw this, I'm thinking it's going to be the Des Mounier swap deal. I feel like if we don't get Juan Foyth, we offer a Des Mounier swap to the Dortmund, they will take it. They don't want direct sale because, of course, they have to go out of their way and find a replacement as well. But if we give them that replacement, I think they will take that bite. So, We'll wait and see. Again, there's not that much news about the right back right now, but we, again, it's quite clear the club do want one. Fourth number one with Mounier and Hector Bellerin being the plan B. Now the big question is, who will the right back signing be? Again, the club are desperate to sign Juan Ford. They want to sign him, but Thomas Mounier at the moment is looking like the easier signing. Now, one of the big targets for Barcelona in the last week of the transfer window is, of course, Bernardo Silva, which, of course, will depend on a lot of factors. But we have got some big news about Bernardo Silva that another team has entered the race to sign him and have already placed a bid, and it was rejected Duncan Castles from the UK media he's very very reliable he's been very quiet this summer as well he's only spoke a few times one of them being Ronaldo wants to leave Man United he got that absolutely spot on and now he's come out saying that Man City have rejected an offer from PSG for Bernardo Silva of around 70 million euros the player has agreed personal terms with PSG and has also rejected a new contract renewal from Man City that puts him in the same bracket salary as Kevin De Bruyne. Whoa, 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 whoa. Couple things. One, if it comes to Barcelona, it will be cheaper. I think the boy right now currently sat on 300,000 pounds per week, which is probably around 350,000 euros. He ain't gonna earn that here. Secondly, 
70 million bid rejected. That means I think we're going to have to spend at least 80 to get him now in the final few uh, days of the window. Thirdly, agreeing personal to the PSG as well. That tells me that Bernardo Silva wants a new challenge and wants to leave Man City. Of course, personal terms with Barcelona will not be a problem as well. The question now really is, will Barcelona pursue the signing and make a bid like PSG have? Again, 70 million euros was rejected. So you're probably thinking you probably need around 80 plus variables to get Bernardo out of Man City, especially with a few days left in the window. Like Gerard Romero said over the past 24 hours that Man City do have a replacement ready to go just in case Bernardo Silva leaves. And again, he has rejected a contract renewal. I think he becomes a free agent not next summer, but the summer after that in 2024. And again, renewal has been offered to him, same salary as Kevin De Bruyne, around about that, and he did reject it. So wait and see on Bernardo Silva. Again, it's still possible, but definitely, definitely very, very difficult for Barcelona to complete by the end of this window. Let's now discuss the players who have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past 24 hours. First up, the hottest exit at the moment is the exit of Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, where Barcelona do want to complete it before Sunday to, of course, to register Jules Conde. Now, the Telegraph in the UK have come out saying that Chelsea have moved closer to agreeing a deal with Barcelona for Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, and Chelsea's confidence in completing the deal is increasing by every single passing day. Now, Heaven Mingel from AES has come out saying that Aubameyang is very close to joining Chelsea for 25 million euros. The official announcement is expected in the next 24 hours. I think mean, Kevin Mingo there jumping the gun a little bit. Ben Jacobs has come out saying that Aubameyang is very close to joining Chelsea. Marcus Alonso is not involved in the agreement. They will pay the full transfer fee, of course, in cash. And Gerard De Miro also came out saying that Aubameyang to Chelsea is about to be completed very, very soon. So I'm sitting here thinking, we're going to lose a good striker, of course, but again, the deal is very, very good for Barcelona. You get a transfer fee, get rid of wages. You brought him on six months on a free transfer. You paid him like what, 300000 in wages over that six-month period, something ridiculously cheap like that. So overall, for Barcelona, a fantastic move. But Fabrizio Romano is still saying this deal is not done. He's come out saying that Chelsea and Barcelona remain in contact for Peter Amico Aubameyang, but the two clubs at the moment have not reached an agreement yet. It is now a poker slash strategy game as talks will continue in the next few hours. But here's the big part. Chelsea are insisting to include Marcus Alonso in this operation while Barcelona considered that as a separate deal. There is no breakthrough in the talks yet. Wow, so Chelsea are trying to shove Marcus Alonso down our throats in this operation, but Barcelona are staying firm. They want cash only and they want their 30 million euro asking price to be met in some way, shape, or form. Remember what Jordan the Mayor said 48 hours ago, if Chelsea offered 27 plus 3 or 25 plus 5, the club will accept it in an instant. Right now we're hearing that Chelsea are offering 22 plus 4 or 5, so again, still some of the difference, but we're hearing a lot of confirmation. Again, Jordan the Mayor saying it's going to be close, having Miguel, Ben Jacobs, the Telegraph saying it's going to be close as well, but for Bitsi Romano is saying, hold your horses, it's not done yet, there's still going to be talks over the next few hours. We'll wait and see. But again, here is my theory. If a Batman is not sold by, I would say, Saturday night or Sunday morning, I don't think Barcelona will sell him anymore. Because then what's the point? We're selling him right now because it's a good deal and we can register Jules Kunde easily for this weekend. And if he not, of course, we don't sell him by Saturday, I think, what, evening, we can't register Jules Kunde. I think the registration takes place, the deadline for registration is, I think, three hours before the match, something like that. So... We'll wait and see, but again, I will say it one more time, if a Aubameyang is in that squad list for the Real by the Lid match this weekend, I think this deal will not happen. So we'll wait and see, but again, there is full confidence in the media that this deal will be completed. Now, a striker who Barcelona are desperate, and I mean desperate to get rid of by the end of the transfer window deadline is, of course, Martin Braithwaite. And we have received, I would say, some positive news about him over the past 24 hours. It's coming in from Marca. They've come out saying that Martin Braithwaite has asked Barcelona to pay him 5 billion euros to let him leave on a free transfer, i.e. to accept that kind of termination and accept the letter of freedom. Now, I first saw this, I'm thinking 5 million. I mean, that's a, a lot, of course, to terminate someone's contract. But then we look deep into it. Braithwaite right now, according to reports, according to rumors, is earning around 80 to 100,000 uh, euros per week, which in theory means I think around 5 million euros per year. So he is taking a theoretically a 50% cut 
cut to leave Barcelona right now to terminate his contract. If he stays for the next two years, earns all the money, he'll earn around 9 to 10 million euros for those two years left. And he's asking for five right now to walk away for free, which... It's not bad, but I think, you know, pay him two. That's a fair in my opinion. But I think this club I think the club right now are highly considering terminating his contract because again, him staying on the wage bill, him staying in the squad as well is just not good. Now I was watching the inside um inside view video on the Barcelona YouTube channel with about for the Man City uh, Barcelona match for the ALS charity. Um uh, Juan Carlos Untue was in the dressing room doing a speech and if you go on my Twitter, I, I tweet the picture You can see Martin Braithwaite standing in the corner in the dressing room in his regular clothes wearing a backpack It's like it's like he's like a kid at school who has no friends just sitting around the cool table, right? That's what he looks like. He looks so isolated. I mean You guys gotta get rid of him at some point now Manu says who remember the reporter from um Forget who he writes for. I think he writes for AES in Real Madrid. He's very, very close to Jorge Mendez. He's a reporter. He came out saying that Real Sociedad are showing some interest in Martin Braithwaite, of course, after selling Alexander Isaac to Newcastle. So watch out for that, maybe. Look, there's no doubt that there's clubs interested in Braithwaite. It's now up to him and Barcelona to reach an agreement, most likely, on his contract termination. Now, another player who Barcelona really want to sell this summer, but not as desperate as Martin Braithwaite, is, of course, Serginho Des. Now, Mundo Portivo came out saying that Xavi does not count on Serginho Des. So far, there hasn't been any concrete offer for the player, but Manchester United have shown some light interest in his signing. Again, I think it'll be difficult to get rid of Des at this point. Unless the team gets desperate, they get a big injury in the right back position in training or something like that. Of course, we do have uh, league matches this weekend. Maybe some team gets injured in the right back, they go for Des. I think the only way at this point now that Des leaves the club this summer is in that Mounier swap deal with Borussia Dortmund. I can't see a club coming in for him, which of course... I think he's a good sign. I would keep him to have him with competition with Juan Foyth, for example. But then again, Roberto's playing well at right back all of a sudden. And then if you bring in Javi Galan at left back, you then loan out Alejandro Balde because you obviously can't just get rid of Jordi Alba. So we could end the uh, summer transfer window with six fullbacks or ideally four or five. So a way to see on Des, again, very, very clear. Barcelona, the board, the sporting sector, Xavi, the coaching staff. No one trusts Des and has faith in him. But Des himself wants to prove everyone wrong. Again, his Instagram story, he's posting beast mode and inspirational songs, all this stuff, you know. We'll wait and see how it goes, but again, his exit, in my opinion, will be difficult in the final few days of the window. But a player who the club were desperate to get rid of and have finally achieved their objective is, of course, the exit of Samuel Umtiti. Yesterday, Barcelona and Lecce released an official statement saying that Barcelona and Lecce have reached an agreement for the loan of Samuel Umtiti until 2023 in June next summer, of course, and there is no purchase option. That's both the club statement exactly the same from Lecce and Barcelona. So you don't know the details about, you know, the games he plays, the Barcelona get a bonus, and also the salary being covered as well. But we did get some positive reports about that salary being covered for the coming in from Jordi Romero. He came out saying that Lecce will pay a small part of Umtiti's salary and Barcelona will also receive a bonus based on the number of matches he plays. And of course, Umtiti will fly and of course he already flew. They treated him like royalty over there. I kind of feel happy for him, but also it is a bit strange. And also for Bishop Romano came out confirming Jordi Romero's statement saying that Lecce will pay a small part of Umtiti's salary and Barcelona will receive bonuses with each match that he plays. So you know what? With them covering the salary, big, big thumbs up deal in my opinion. Even if they didn't cover the salary, it would have been a big success. But them covering a small part of it, maybe 10%, 20%, whatever it may be, is a huge dub in my opinion. Of course, Umtiti when he comes back next summer from this low move, his contract will, I think, 95% be terminated. So, looks like this is the end of Samuel Umtiti at Barcelona. Big Samu looks like uh, is no more. But again, I wish him all the best. I hope he goes out there and let Chain City out and does well, plays well, plays week in, week out. Because we know we all know that a fully fit Umtiti is a brilliant center back. So, we'll wait and see how that long move goes. Again, we'll talk about Umtiti next summer when he comes back from this long move. But for now, for this season, Umtiti will not be a Barcelona player. Now, a player that will follow in Samuel Umtiti's footstep and will leave the club on loan this summer is Abdi. Keep in mind, we have not seen too much of Abdi this season. Juan Gamper, Rayo Vallecano, Real Sociedad, and even in the charity match a few days ago, we came on, of course, last few minutes, but we have not seen too much of Abdi, and now we know why. Alberto Rogue and Mateo Morito from Relivo have come out saying that Abdi will 100% leave Barcelona on loan. Decision has been made by both the player 
and the club and the coaching staff is signed. But before leaving, his contract will be extended until 2026. Real by the lid seems the most likely destination for Abdi as of now. I tell you what, I've heard Valencia close to Abdi, Gerona, Real by the lid. I've heard uh, Villa Real. I've heard so many clubs that are very, very close to Abdi. But we already knew this. We knew that Barcelona wanted to hold on to him just a bit to see what happens in the forward positions. But with the Bamyang leaving, maybe Memphis will talk about him in a few seconds as well. The club are confident they can leave. They can let Abdi leave alone and will not regret it. So again, Abdi, I would say in the next 48 to 72 hours, he will leave the club on loan. But first, he has to renew his contract like Nico and Alex Collado did. Now, a player who could end up staying at Barcelona after months of speculation speculation of his exit is Memphis Depay. Firstly, on the Juventus saga, Fabrizio Romano came out giving a recap on that, which I think is very, very insightful. He came out saying that, of course, Memphis Depay's move to Juventus has now totally collapsed. Here's the big part though, he did not change his salary demands, but Juventus ran out of budget and decided to sign Milik and Paredes. They were initially counting on Rabiot's exit, which did not happen. So DeMarcio is saying that, well DeMarcio of course number one source in Italy alongside Romano, he said that the pie changed his salary uh, demands last second, but Romano is saying that look, in the Juventus budget they only had enough room for either Milik and Paredes or just the pie and Juventus chose Milik and Paredes. If Rabiot left the Man United, they could have gotten the pie and Paredes, which of course would have been the Juventus ideal situation. If they could choose, they would have went with the pie and the Paredes of course, but they couldn't, they didn't have the budget, so in the end they went for Milik and Paredes, two signings instead of one, which does make sense. And in my opinion, him not changing his salary demand is a good, you know, view on him, in my opinion. And the question now is, where's the pie gonna go? Keep in mind, he has a full agreement with Barcelona to terminate his contract. We're hearing right now the most likely club, if he does leave, is Manchester United. Iker Kanur and also Sport came out saying that Manchester United are ready to pay 10 million euros to Barcelona for Memphis, but again, it makes no sense. He's a full agreement to get, get his contract terminated, but Man United will give us some money. You know what? I will absolutely take it. So, I think a move to United though will be difficult. They're pay paying apparently 100 million euros for freaking Anthony, man. <laughs> that Rafinha for 50 million is looking like an absolute steal now. So yeah, they spent what? 70 on Casemiro. They want to get a backup goalkeeper. They want to get Anthony for 100. So, I don't know if United will have the budget for him, but again, a contract termination, if they offer him a good contract with a good salary, could be very, very likely. But something that's more likely is him staying at Barcelona. Gerard De Miro came out saying that it's not ruled out that Memphis Depay stays at Barcelona, although he does have some interest from Premier League clubs. I'm thinking Newcastle, I'm thinking United. Well, we can see with the pie again with the Bamiang leaving. I would absolutely love to keep Memphis. Memphis and Loa, uh, Rafinha and Demba, Rafinha and Dembele, Ansu Ferran, bada bing, bada boom. I'm very happy. Of course, Memphis as a direct replacement for Lundowski is not that great. He's not a striker, but you know what? He's better than nothing. I'd rather have Memphis than we get rid of him for free than bring in some crappy striker on deadline day like a Soldado or a Cavani or something like that, right? So we'll wait and see. Again, I'm very happy to keep Memphis, but keep in mind if we do keep him, he'll leave next summer for free. I doubt he'll renew his contract with Barcelona unless he performs exponentially well, but we'll wait and see on Memphis. I think right now the club are very happy with either way. If he leaves, okay. If he stays, okay as well. Now, another Dutchman who could also end up staying at Barcelona this summer is, of course, Frankie de Jong. Same story, just different player, different Dutchman. Catalonia Radio came out saying that everything now indicates that Frankie de Jong will stay at Barcelona. But of course, we're still waiting for that meeting. Over the past week and a half, I've been telling you guys that at some point this week, there will be a meeting between Barcelona and Frankie de Jong to definitively 100% decide his future. Leave the club or stay at the club with a salary reduction of around 30 to 35%. Now, there's been no news about this meeting. It is now Friday. We've got two days left in the week. There's been nothing until yesterday. Gerard Romero, everyone also came out saying it, that Frankie de Jong's agent, Ali Dursin, did arrive in Barcelona from London. So his agent is now in Barcelona. So I'm expecting some news today. That's just my opinion. He landed yesterday. What time was it? It was like afternoon, 2 p.m. local time. And of course, it's now Friday morning. There's been no news. There's no news about him leaving or, you know, a meeting with Barcelona. So I think today 
we'll get something on Frankie. His agent is now in Barcelona. Let's hope for some movements and let's hope for an answer, I would hope, by the end of this week. Let's now discuss some of the news surrounding Barcelona over the past 24 hours. Firstly, I want to give you guys an update from yesterday's video about UEFA possibly sanctioning Barcelona for violating FFP back in 2020-2021 season under, of course, Jose Maria Bartomeu, the absolute prick. Now, we have some positive news about that. Cope have come out saying that UEFA have to strictly leak the information about Barcelona possibly being sanctioned, knowing that the club have already done their due diligence to make that impossible. What they're doing is following their protocol by checking Barcelona's accounts, nothing more. You have checked Barcelona's account for the 1819, 1920, and 2021 season, focusing on the last one. At first, it looks like Barcelona could actually be sanctioned by UEFA. However, they won't be as the clubs can fix their situation, which of course Barcelona do intend on doing. Also, UEFA cannot sanction Barcelona because the losses were less than 50% limit during the pandemic. Players and workers have been paid their salaries. The 482 million euro losses in 2020-2021 was hugely inflated. 717 million euros were of course earned from economic levers over the past few months. So overall, just a smoke screen from UEFA, just, you know, regular tech up, so to speak. But again, for the other clubs that were mentioned in yesterday's video, like Juventus, Roma, PSG, we don't know. And to be honest, we don't care. But again, it's only coming in from Cope. We'll have to wait and see if other uh, outlets come out confirming this. But at the moment, we are hearing that Barcelona are not too worried about this possible UEFA sanction. Now, the final topic that I want to discuss before I end off this video is Barcelona's Champions League group stage draw. Of course, yesterday I did the live watch along or live reaction for that. Check that out, my live reaction. I did go a bit crazy in that. But I want to talk about it just for a minute. So again, we got Bayern Munich, Inter Milan, and Victoria Plez, which is pretty much, you can say on paper, is the group of death. We've got, what, less than a week left in this window. The club need to do something. They cannot, with this current squad, I'd be worried. Because here's why. I think we can get out of this group on paper, of course. But keep in mind, we're going to be having La Liga Champions League. La Liga Champions League. It's a World Cup year. Remember, World Cup's in November. La Liga Champions. La Liga Champions. Look at Real Madrid. Look at the group they got. RB Leipzig, Shakhtar. What was the last, what was the last team? Rangers. I mean, come on. They can freaking rotate in, in, in midweek and they can go for the league. Our bit of the season is to get at least quarterfinals in the Champions League, but win La Liga. If you want to compete in both, we need, of course, squad depth. But we do have currently in the midfield and the attack where the defense looks weak. More specifically, of course, in the full back positions. We need Juan Foyth, we need Javi Galan, and I'd also say we need Bernardo Silva if Frankie de Jong accepts that salary reduction. If we have the money, we're not going to spend that much money next summer. Go out, make the team now perfect, give them one year this season to gel, hopefully we win, you know, a Copa League in the next season. Go full force for everything. In this group, it will be difficult, especially even Atletico Madrid, they have an easy group. They had what? Porto... And I forget the other two, but Atletico Madrid also have an easy group as well. They'll be competing with us. Sevilla, they've got no chance. They got, I think, um, they got City, Dortmund, and someone else. So Sevilla are looking very, very tough right now. But again, for Barcelona to compete, we need to have a very, very strong end to this transfer window. Let's hope Juan Laporta, Rafael Uste, Jordi Cruyff, and Mateo Alemán can make that happen. So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and of course leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. But the main thing on our first day, of course, is on Barcelona's fullback reinforcement. Do you think we'll make those correct acquisitions in those fullback positions by the end of the transfer window? Secondly, on Oba going to Chelsea, think it'll happen or not? Would you do it or not? Would you remain firm on that asking price? And also, would you accept Marcus Alonso as part of that deal? Thirdly, on the exit of both Memphis and Frankie, what would you do? Keep one, keep both, sell both. Would you only keep Frankie if he takes out a reduction? What would you do with Memphis as well? And also your thoughts on Barcelona's Champions League group stage draw. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and Forza Barca.